Welcome everyone, you're listening to and perhaps watching Calling the Audible. I'm your host, P.S. Delores. I am joined by Stefan Verardi and the soon to be pre-vorced. 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 Hanging hanging up on your girlfriend as you start the show. Responsible until you get in the couch. How does that work, pre-vorced? Well, what happens is she leaves you and that's it. (laughs) (laughs) So, breakup. No, No. (laughs) pre-vorced. It's worse. It's worse because you've invested something. You've invested time. You invested your feelings like, like any relationship. No, <laughs> I mean that, that's not been my experience in dating. So <laughs> I have very little experience in dating, and I'd probably keep it that way. So was you for you? Was it breakups or free force? I mean, it was one night, and that's it. All right, fun stuff. Fun so, stuff. so what you're saying is you're single, and ladies should hit exactly. that up. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. One eight hundred Ferrari. We're working on Ferrari tonight. He's our sponsor for FBF. Yeah, now. five cents <laughs> in. Moving up in the world, man. Of course, yeah, you got to make moves. Uh, the man pressing all the buttons is, of course, the Eagle of Master Control. We didn't do awkward introductions. No, we were, no, we're yeah, about to. We were about to. How's Don't the pre-voice not an awkward introduction? Oh, oh it's coming. Oh, no, it's no. coming. Much worse. Um, and, of course, I'll do that during the reset. How's that, Eagle? Halfway through the show. <laughs> to make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just a reminder, I'm peace. Uh, Mo Khan is not in today. He's pre voiced the show for two weeks. <laughs> so you'll have to deal with our uh, very busy our brand of insanity. For now. Because you know, if this show's going on for 14 weeks, he's going to miss again. Yeah, we're also, I'm going to miss a week too. No, you will not. Okay. Can we so we can do call ins on this show. <laughs> can I call in from Savannah? I don't think you want me to call in from Savannah. We do. You should call in how from Savannah. How bad could it be? How worse could it be? How, the question is how much bourbon can I drink? Fair. Kentucky bourbon? No. We will My find out on another out. podcast. Sorry? We will find out on another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gentlemen, what did you see this week in Division 6 and 6D? Stuff. Oh, I guess I'm the guy. Well, <laughs> in Div 6. Wait, wait, wait. Off. Breaking nope. news. Oh, breaking right. news. Hold on. Uh, Vince pre- Pisano has a recommendation for you, uh, Steph. He goes uh, tinder.com. Oh. It's a religious site. Oh, yeah. And then like uh, Dave Delarocca says farmersonly.com. Yeah. You, farmers. don't have, you don't have to be alone at farmersonly.com. Farmers is the only. actual slogan. Do I actually have to do work? Because that's not good. That's already a turn off. No, you could just say you have a farm. Can we can we but set up can farm? we set up Stefano's dating profiles while we're doing the show? Oh my god. It's, yes. And get awesome. all the non- how matches. Many, how many dates are you gonna get by the end of the show? <laughs> Negative this, this, four. This is what we're gonna do. Eagle, we'll, we'll set you'll we'll have you set <laughs> it up. Lose dates. And as we're doing the show, just interject randomly and ask us questions to add onto the form and Simo and I will give the information. You realize I have a show to produce while doing this. Yes. Do wow. you really produce this? This is what I'm asking produce. you to do to produce <laughs> the show. show. Now I'm asking you to produce him some sex. Yes. <laughs> Much needed. But I'll survive. <laughs> <laughs> so this show got off the Speaking of it, Pizano, we saw we saw Pension Plan this week. Was yes, I did watch the Pension Plan. Uh, it was a back and forth game against Dog Pound. And uh, I, I don't like the color of their jerseys, but that's, that's something. What is the color of their jerseys? It's like Co- a, those it's lines. like, you know, like the browns, orange. Yeah. It's supposed to be like that, but it's faded. So it's much worse. But I they, don't, how could it be worse than? Because it was faded. Browns, brown. It's a new jersey, but it looks faded. Well, but that's just but isn't that stylish. A, isn't that is an actual though? color, though? I don't know. Is it, <laughs> is ask, it, is it a style, though? Ask the wrong guy like, about color, bro. Actual, you go, what's the like, color? They must have a team picture. Brown? Dog brown pound. is a color. Faded brown, orange looking stuff. It's like he doesn't listen. He does not. He's just there producing the show. It's actual orange. It's not faded. It's it's supposed to be like a, I think, like a I brown, think, brown. I think the scorekeeper may have been faded. <laughs> it's like a, it's like ah, a Longhorn's hand, orange. Yeah. Sorry? It's is like it? a Longhorn's orange. It looks like Longhorn's jerseys from... Like it does look like it's like now those, those long ones jerseys are faded. Exactly. <laughs> that's, see, that's, I, that's, that's what I was saying. <laughs> Nobody ever pays attention to me when I talk. So, yeah, going back to the game at hand, uh, it was pretty back and forth until Pension Plan finally made a stop because uh, that was pretty much their problem during the first half of the game. But once they made their stop and they capitalized on it, they took, they took, they took a one-score lead and uh, they took that into the half. And in the second half, it was more of the same. Pension plan started with the ball, and uh, they wasted a lot of the clock. So Doc Pound could not really come back after they scored again. So they were up by two scores. But Doc Pound came back. They scored, and 
they tried to tie the game, but they threw an interception to Joe Marziliano, his yeah. only stat of the game. It's a big one, though. Pretty big one. It was in the end zone, too, so it was a pretty big play. He was very hyped. And uh, he told me to give him five tackles, even though it was just one interception. But I gave him one interception because that's my job. And uh, that well, was why that would game. He want five tackles. The pick is better. Yeah, but he yeah. wants the pick and five tackles because oh, he made like a it. Very, yeah, pretty much. The, uh, there's also a huge. It was three touchdowns with Anthony CJ, but one huge touchdown going to the most unguardable man in FPF, Junior Spera. You're seeing that on the screen right now. Yeah. Well, uh, you see, Junior Spera is a is a is a, he's a big man. Okay, he makes me look. Small, like a slightly, less, like a big slightly man. less big man. Exactly, yeah. that's the perfect word. I was looking that for was that. was my philosophy of having you two on the show with oh, me today. Okay, really? Wow, oh. <laughs> oh, wow. we're going there. Yeah, we're that's getting right. over there. <laughs> Nobody likes you, Simo. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> in that, uh, so Junior, him uh, in the red zone, especially, all he does, he snaps the ball. He takes two steps to the right. He turns around and he's right there waiting for that ball in the gut. This time he made the dive though. He yeah. f- he caught it like diving, which well, that's was, the thing. was hilarious. People don't realize he's actually uh, uh, he's he's a very good athlete. He's just a really big dude. He really is. Like I've uh, I don't know him, but I know people that have known Junior. I know Junior, but I've known him. I've kn- I know people that have known him for a long time. I've <laughs> do you said know him? No, I don't much. have any more okay. information. No one there is. Wait, do you person. know him or do you know people? That I know, know him, or do you but know I know people, people that know him, that know him longer know him. than I've known him. But he also knows him. But I know him. Exactly. So, so, Junior, you can you can hit you can hit uh, Stefan Verardi up on ChristianMingle.com. I th- I thought it was uh, Farmers.com. Was that? Oh, we're gonna, gonna get you another word. Oh, sense. okay, okay. You're gonna be everywhere because there's, uh, there's plenty of fish, so to speak. Oh, wow! Another very clever name for a AmishSingles.com. AmishSingles. <laughs> <laughs> Which makes I you wonder too much how work. are they signing up? Do you remember? Oh, that's a very good question. That's Eagle, a very do you remember? Good do you <laughs> don't they like hate electricity or something like that? Um, do you remember Eagle when we? Uh, when we built a, d- a dating uh, uh, dating profile for one of the original hosts on Calling the Audible, uh, Andrew Dana, actually the original host on Calling the Audible, uh, we r- we listed his favorite movie as books. <laughs> was that I mean, actually that a good it movie? Work. It didn't <laughs> work. It was I the mean, worst dating profile. It made ever. sense because that's Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so going back to Junior, <laughs> if he had uh, taken it more seriously, he would have made strides in becoming a very uh, very good athlete in uh, in uh, this uh, in uh, in football. He's just he's a very athletic for a big man. His signature move is catch the ball and twirl until yeah. you get flagged. Wait, what? And it usually takes 15 yards before they get there. He yeah. just twirls and twirls, and it's well, hard he's, to he's tackle. He's got, he's got quick feet. He does. He yeah. does. It's very impressive. He's very hard on himself too, though. Sometimes when he does not get the job done. Simo, Simo? you catch anything? Yes, my boy is Macdo with the mm-hmm. big win over DGC. Uh, in Division 16, we believe that DJC would have been a, well, should be a, one of the best teams in Division 6 D all together. They were almost in Division 6. They were like on the cusp. They were the one team that yeah. was decided to go Division 6, 6 D, and, and to balance the divisions, they ended up in 6 D. And last week we discussed how we all felt, well, all in, not including Stefano, but including Mokarn, felt that DJC would be one of the strongest teams in 6 D, like the one team you want to beat if you want to prove that you're a contender in Division 6 D. And this, it's a good win for McDo. They never had really like a. They're they're not based on a strong offense, but their defense has always been solid. They've been kept p- keeping games to low scores, and this is a perfect example of what McDo's been doing since the fall season. Is they win games twenty to nineteen. Is 18, Sean Martin fourteen? If if DGC get bumped up into Division D for play uh, Division Six for playoffs, is Sean Martin a strong enough quarterback for DGC? I give the team this time because you might break down the quarterback for the wrong team. No, I only do that for rushers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> No, but <laughs> uh, I honestly, I'm not sure. Like, yeah, I've seen him play decent. Like, he's he's okay, he's good, but he's not the best quarterback in the division. And the problem is when you move into a division that's a bit deeper and defenses are a little bit better, you tend to see little flaws be exploited by the defenses. And if he starts throwing a few more turnovers, DGC's defense might not be able to keep them in the game for long enough. I caught unknown talent as on six ballers. Um, was during my game, so it was on and off. Um, Alessandro Barazzoni looks great, man. He looks good. They added um, they 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 added uh, Nicky Farinaccio, who wasn't there in this game, but the core itself is so strong. Um, they even have uh, Alex Dacula on the team. Uh, Alex the, the other version. Dacula. The His other nickname Dacula. is the other. The so other. from henceforth, he'll be known one. as Alex the other Dacula. Mm-hmm. Um, and like for for. Uh, zone, zone six balls. It was it was a game that started okay, 
uh, early on, there was a, a big score that got the team super hyped. Uh, the game was, I believe, 7-6 at the time. And then that was it for Gentile Valbonar. That was, that was the last time he was able to get um, anything else on the board. Did you catch anything else, uh, Stefano? Uh, I also caught uh, the Hot Sauce Sports game, yeah. which uh, was... Uh, rough on the eyes? Rough on the eyes, yes. <laughs> I feel like if, Peas, you had other receivers... Four of them were not there. Four of them were not there. <laughs> Two of his strong guys didn't show up. You were playing the seventh rounders, by the way. Yeah, yeah. that's a very interesting team there. I have a couple. I have a story of that team, but I might not mention it. But you I will, will because, because I had to. Say and uh, so if he, if you peas had those two guys, it would have been a bigger lead, a bigger win. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing with seventh rounders, it's a lot of new guys. Yeah. Okay. And and you have some guys who played in another league. Yeah. You have a, some guys well, they're new to the FPF. Yeah, like so, like MFL. I've always said that. So, like Stephen Harper saw it and and the guys from Outlaws, who are a strong Division Five team, and they've added some FPF pieces. But those guys are came into FPF as like a, a good Division Division Five team, are the strongest team in MFL. So, right. you know, guy, other teams that come in from MFL, Division Six is a good place to start. Division Six D, Division Six. Yep. But uh, so it's a mix of some guys from FPF and guys from that league. Um, it's a different kind of league in terms of the schemes that you see on defense. And I know we call the defense that they've never seen before. Uh, so, therefore, the second half, uh, the quarterback just looked lost. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So, it's, that's just – we won that game just an experience because you're right. We didn't have the roster to win that game. No. Um, we have two guys who never play offense on the field. And uh, we won that game entirely on defense. Yes, that was a – you guys have the, the, the defense that could compete with a team that – Needs to learn more of the ropes of uh, how the di the difference in level of competition from MFL, MFL yeah. to FPF, and uh, you know they they just get a, they're gonna learn you know they they had they have some players that know how to play but they gotta make some calls that are less predictable I'll say because mm -hmm. they have a pretty predictable uh, simple playbook they make that a bit more complex to like mess with other defense more like with defensive schemes then they'll, they'll have a better chance. But uh, it takes time, right? I mean, they got they got to have a feel for how it is in this uh, league. That's uh, I mean, and they'll be fine. <laughs> this isn't so bad, like uh, right? They, like the, the, the scoreline. So like they were up thirteen nothing. Yeah, they were. They were up. So so they they had the ball first. They scored. Okay. Um, I threw the interception. They scored, mm -hmm. and then we changed our defense. Uh, to I, I was explaining to you by yeah by tax where it was a lot of sh we're sh I don't want to go into too much detail but we're shooting a lot of gaps mm -hmm. and an, uh, there was an option on the backside mm -hmm. and um, because of that it always looked like we started in the same defense and we all ended up in a different place because we we, we changed our defense in play based on what they yeah, were yeah. doing but which again if you if you don't know that that's what we're doing you can't exploit it and therefore they they, they literally. Couldn't move the ball. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, considering they, they had a hot start, right? Like they, they scored 14 in the first half, six in the second half. So, yeah, considering they only lost by five, you, so sh you was, shut them out in the second half. It was it was a like, shutdown. Essentially, so we they scored the first two drives. Then they didn't score till the end of the game, where it was just they, like garbage time, garbage time whatever. points. The game was over. So they're often like it doesn't struggled. show like that game was just yeah. controlled. You know, they're often struggled, but. Your, their defense wasn't terrible. No, right? like you only scored well, no, three touchdowns. The, the thing is, their, de their defense, their players are competent, and the defense is competent because MFL is a good league. The guys know standard sch schemes and standard plays, and so the team's not bad. It's just in comparison to uh, to what we see in FPF, in comparison to what teams do in FPF, it makes it difficult. Steph, uh, if you drive 43 miles away to Alder Bend, New York, you're going to meet 23 year old cowgirl 902730388. She's looking for a man between 18 and 99 years old. Oh. Uh, you are between 18 and 99 years old. I am between 18 old. and 99. Wow. She's a uh, I kind of fit trip. the qualifications. <laughs> we go. <laughs> we split gas money. She's open for things. <laughs> oh. She's uh, on the looking out. You know. 18 to 99. Looking up, man. Just 18 looking to 99. So if you're 100 years old, it just sucks to be you. Yeah, it really so, would you catch anything else in 16? Games-wise, no. But there's one thing I want to bring up. Okay. Uh, we talked about this a little bit, like in the preseason, the teams that were, like, you know, on the cusp but didn't necessarily make mm -hmm. it into uh, Division Six D or made it into Division Six. Uh, there's a few teams that, you know, were frustrated with how they were ranked. Yeah. Which which is fair. Like if you if you anticipate playing in Division Six D and you're let's say bumped into the Division Six, it's 
a little bit stronger. The, the difference between the two is marginal because technically we don't know. Division 6B could end up being the stronger division. But th- like it's to me, it's not a big enough disparity to actually make it like a big deal. Right? Yeah. Like, just playing Division 6, it's not the end of the world. But some teams feel like it is. Well, but like, the thing is, it, like it, looking across the board... There's not a ton of blowouts. Like people, no? be, the games have been good. It's been one of the most engaging divisions. Well, aside from like 16. the forfeits, for instance, like the, Sorry? the forfeits or forfeits, like don't look at the six. Yeah, yeah forfeits, and, and then there was a game where uh, a team showed up like half an hour. Yeah, late. I was there. Uh, there was a uh, goon squad against the warriors uh, before last they were. Night. They, yeah, there was last night. Uh, they were supposed to be. This is goon squad. We're supposed to be seven players when uh, when the game started, but there was an incident before they got. To the they game, got into an accident they got way. into an accident on the way. Thankfully, they're okay, but uh, that kind of uh, you know they didn't have enough players. They had four guys, and the rule is every five minutes six points. So by the time a fifth member of their team showed up, they were already down eighteen zero. They didn't have their quarterback, Goon Squad, and uh, then uh, the uh, Warriors just you know they they played their game. They did what they did. They used it as a practice scrimmage. It seemed that way because then it ended forty-five uh, nothing, but an unfortunate incident. But thankfully, everybody's okay in that team. Yeah, yeah that like that's one of the blowouts. But then again, if yeah, like, there, there, there's going to be some. But I'm saying overall, yeah, but if Kunsoa would have been seven, it would have been tighter game, for sure. It would not have been forty-five nothing. It would have been a completely different story. Yeah, it would have. Meatball is one of those teams. However, now two two weeks in a row after their first week loss, uh, they were a team we knew might dominate Division Six D. Um, their two uh, wins. In the last two weeks, have have really um, stood out. Uh, Johnny Casari, uh, nine completions, fourteen nine nine for fourteen, one hundred and forty four yards, four four touchdowns. Um, just lighting up the Dirty Birds. Not sure if it's Dirty Birds. We know are a team that's been struggling so far. Um, plus, they beat Potatoes last mm-hmm. week, who's a team that like the two the two teams they've beaten are teams that are one and two, and they got shut up by Bud Knights. Which Simo says has a legendary defense. I mean, it's the best defense in football. Hey, they have two. Bud Knights have two shutouts in three weeks. I mean, that's pretty good. It is. It's, it's, it, and it's impressive. Didn't they only allow six points in that other game? Uh, no, they lost the one game, didn't they? I mean, we can all we can all look. <laughs> we <right>? could <laughs> you know. If there's if there's only a device, no, they, they lost twenty four thirteen. Two Los Siete as amigos who are three no. Bud Knights, come on. But uh, going back to the Just B ballers, Bud Knights. the B ballers, uh, honestly, their defense was. Uh, Kind of uh, put uh, dir- the Dirty Birds to shame, let's just say. As you see, uh, Ryan Acher, a- or a- Aker, I don't know how to pronounce his name. But he threw six interceptions. Yeesh. And uh, that's uh, if you expect to throw six interceptions and win a game, you might have to get mentally checked out. But you might have to. out of those six picks, uh, four of them were run back for a touchdown. For a touchdown. Yeah. So... Yeesh. They basically <laughs> the B ballers literally split their points in half from off on offense and defense like almost evenly. Well, but like no points are scored on special teams, so win. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So I mean, they, they, they stopped there. the special teams. I mean, the punts were never <laughs> run back. <laughs> there we go. And uh, you know there were no missed field goals, so I mean you know it's uh, so there's that considered that a win. At least. So but yeah, the B ballers team. I I wasn't at their. I was on another field, but I saw glimpses of their game, and uh, they just looked like they were having a field day with. Uh, the Dirty Birds. It was a uh, pretty hard. Well, four pick sixes. Well, every brutal. time I turned back, I saw an interception return for a touchdown, and that was probably like three times. So, so yeah, not very good. specifically Division Six. Mm-hmm. Um, now in the NFL, we know there's like a stat that says teams that start zero and three have X amount of percent of making the playoffs yep. and it's super low. Um, only th- X amount of teams have made the playoffs if they're going zero and three. I don't know the numbers. Um, in very FPF. Low. While more teams do make the playoffs, there's only 10 games. You've, you've, you've gone winless in 30% of your season. Is it the same kiss of death in Division Six as it would be, uh, let's say, what we know of in the NFL? Well, in my opinion, no, because in the NFL, they have 16 games to play. And uh, that in, uh, in FPF, you can have three wins and still be in the playoffs. So they still have half of their games. And uh, they have a little more than half of their games to get those three wins. I've seen three win teams make it to the playoffs. So, I, in my opinion, it's not the kiss of death like the NFL. I tend to agree with Steph. I've seen zero and three teams turn it around quickly. Finish like if you if you're able to make it, it 
two and four, two and five, you're still in playoff contention considering how many teams make it into the playoffs. Yeah. We're looking at divisions where 16 out of 20 will make it. So if only four teams don't make the playoffs, there's a solid chance that it m- maybe even two and eight team makes the playoffs. And getting two wins out of your last seven games is very plausible. Also, for the NFL schedule, people seem to forget, but usually you have a lot of divisional games at the beginning of the season and everything, which impacts exactly how the standings end up. You have the that NFPF too, though. Yes, but it's different in that sense because there's so many more teams in the division. The yeah. divisional record doesn't matter as much. Whereas if you go down 0-3 th- in your own division, well, that means you're already behind the eight ball against all the other teams and everything. So you're, you're basically you're losing two games at once. Um, so let's evaluate these 0-3 teams uh, so far. Uh, what we have a goon squad, four and twenty TBA replacements. Um, what do you guys? Ballers. Sorry. And zone six ballers. And zone six ballers. Sorry. Um, so you know, look at a team or two of the, from that list, guy, gentlemen, and tell me what you think of them and uh, if they, you think they can turn their season around. Well, as we know, replacements have been uh, known to make the playoffs and. Uh, Usually they are part of the upset of the first week in playoffs. So I see them out of those five teams that are more likely to switch it around. Goon squad, unfortunate incident that happened. So, but uh, I've seen their game when they had a full squad and they need to work on some kinks. Fourth and twenty, they've been known as the uh, Miami Dolphins types nice. because of their color scheme and jerseys. And, uh, and jerseys, <laughs> yeah. And uh, we all know Miami had a O and. One in fifteen. No, they, weren't they like four and zero first, and then they no, I know, but like back in the, in like a recent past, and they finished the season with like one. Yeah, win. with Ken Cameron as coach, someone one in fifteen. Yeah, it was one. They scored the last play of the last game. So basically, they're living up to that Miami Dolphin team. But uh, in my opinion, replacements are the most likely the, the team that get out of it. I think that fourth and twenty is one of the teams that has a chance of turning around. We've seen it in the past. Like it's one of those teams where a lot of people just think, oh, they're they're not good. They'll be at the bottom. And then they surprise one or two teams, and like we just mentioned a few minutes ago, where two and eight, three and seven could get you in. Fourth and twenty could be sneaking out like one or two wins by, you know, week six or seven, and then you're looking at a potential two and four record that could sneak them in. They just lost a very close game to Vultures, who I believe is a very strong team in the division by a single point, which puts more stock in what fourth and twenty could do against future opponents. Their schedule hasn't been, you know, it it's been okay, like it. It wasn't the most brutal of schedules, but considering who's left in Division Six for them to play, I believe they'll be able to get away with a few wins. Um, what about a team like Goon Squad? You, you guys see it? Uh, well, Goon Squad, uh, they have to work on. Uh, you know, they, they. It's as if they shoot themselves in the foot often, mm-hmm. because uh, what I see is. Some of the receivers they drop open passes and they all hate themselves after that. But like, there's catches that you just have to make. Like, there's no chance. There there shouldn't be a chance that you drop a pass when there's like no defender in any sight. And then after that would be on like a key third or fourth down. And mm-hmm. then after oh, you went up for it on fourth, you failed the fourth down. But that's a good point. Actually, yeah. we we played against him, and I remember like thinking to myself like, they looked so upset and miserable, and I was like. You know, if you guys were having fun, you'd probably play better. <laughs> you'd be more loose. Yeah, it doesn't take much to upset them. Uh, they usually get upset at each other. I've yeah. seen that. They get mad at each other. Got them Italians. Yeah, I mean, like, this is the the reputation that uh, pers- perceives us, pursues us or something. I'm using a very technical word I'm not familiar with. Peruses. Peruses? No. I'm, I'm, no. I'm using word with mine, mine sounds better. Punishes us. But nah. Nah, percentages. Perce- I think us. it's perceived. Percentages. Percentages us. us? us? Yeah, percentile Perce- of anger. There you go. Make it sense. makes you a number. Yeah, I saw number. Uh, that TBA game against my Div Two, the Mighty Ducks, on uh, Sunday. D Two, n- not Div Two. It's a reference to the movie D Two, the Mighty Ducks. It's still the worst. Because uh, the second season is Ducks. Yes, I, I, I know. I get it. It's just Why would it be Div Two? <laughs> Why would you say Div Two when we're clearly talking about Div Six? Have you never watched the Mighty Ducks? I will kill you both. Can There's we go answer us? the question? Yes, Can we I have guess. a Muddy Ducks watch party? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be great. Did you never hear of the V formation? Like, honestly, yes. that's the one part that I it's recall. It's the most sexual part of the movie. It's very, also very. probably the worst formation. Oh, yeah, it's got off on actual <laughs> hockey, but hey, it worked. <laughs> it worked for Vendetta. Fun fact, Muddy Ducks goalkeeper <laughs> is in uh, prison for meth. Yeah. We covered that uh, last season. Well, uh, yeah, that was we last season. I'm talking this season. It happened again. So Yeah. 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 Hey, speaking about yeah, go, TVA, go oh, TVA. Uh, I saw I saw the games against the Mighty Ducks on Sunday at Loyola, and honestly, it was a closer game than I would have expected, considering what TBA is at the moment. Their offense isn't really 
you know, hitting the ground up and their Mighty Ducks have been a strong team in Division 6. I just, it was one of those games where TBA got into their own heads and were weirdly aggressive about some certain things. Like, you, it's flag football. Don't drop your shoulder into guys. It's it's very simple. They just, think it's a legal play? No, no. The guy was just mad. The, oh, he was okay. right down the sidelines. Yeah. The guy stepped in front of him and instead of, you know, going out of bounds or stopping okay. or whatever, he just, just dropped their shoulder into That makes sense. So, Aside from that, it was like their offense made some nice plays. Sean Yofi has been playing really well. He's a, a, he's fast and he's going to be a guy that causes problems to a lot of guys. We've known the Gottlieb brothers for a long time, and they're, they've all been also known to be like very s- good playmakers on uh, in FPF, let alone Division Six. So I think this team's going to get together. Their quarterback needs a little bit more time. Brett Rosenberg is not necessarily the most refined quarterback in FPF just yet. But he made some nice throws, and his play calling is getting better. If they're able to keep a game like the Mighty Ducks to only seven points, they should be able to beat the guys left on their schedule. Next week, they're playing replacements. They, the score was 37-30. Yeah, they lost by seven. Oh, I, I, I thought you said if um, they were able to hold them to seven, I was like, they didn't hold them to seven no. at all. They lost it's by the seven. opposite of that. So, considering they have replacements, Channel 4 News Team, Vultures le- next, they could win two of those games. Right, so if you're able to win two in the next three games, or you know, two in the next four games, you'll be two and six. You should be all right to put yourself in a nice position for the playoffs, or at least make a run in the playoffs, considering you started zero and three. Yeah. Um. Fat Diablos, they're one of those teams like you're saying they were complaining about being put into Div Six. Yep. Uh, they thought they should be in Six D. Oh, they didn't think they would be in Seven. Um, well, I thought they should have been. <laughs> oh, okay. But no, in in reality, last time uh, Michael DeGear was at quarterback, I believe they were either five hundred or four and six. I believe it's first season as quarterback. No, no, it's no? I've seen season. him throw once, maybe as a replacement. But no, 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 he, he played a season yeah. at quarterback. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they've done this Sorry. before, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you know, this is a team with just friends. Uh, but they still want to com- be competitive, um, and they have a lot of FPF veterans. So, considering how they were crying, they are now two and one. One of them is being a forfeit, fair. Yeah. But they're very competitive in the last game. They yeah. won a good game against replacements. Well, it was a loss that turned to a forfeit because the other team violated the cap. But not re- not the replacements game uh, this week. No, no. When they played TBA week one, the forfeit. I, I said that. And that was uh, they lost that game to TBA. Yes. But TBA had a wrong so roster. So now they're two and one coming Just off a win they against replacements. They yeah. should have been one and two. Yeah. But Simone's not paying attention to you. But they won the game, I'm saying. Yeah, they beat the replacements. Six. Yes, they did. Uh, is what I'm saying. So... Um, how well do you expect him to do with an inexperienced quarterback and a general lack of speed? Well, <laughs> well their name is Fat Diablos. Yeah. I liked it. I was pretty proud of myself in the article last week. I, I, my headline for their game was, The Devil Wears Fatso. Wow. <laughs> is that, is that an affordable it. brand? What? Is that an affordable Fatso brand? Fatso is the most affordable brand. Yeah, okay, good. Sure. I, have tr- I have trouble finding clothing, so I need some. Diablos Wears Good America, bro. I'm telling oh, you. I should, eh? But Jesus. my passport <laughs> might be declined. Anyways. The uh, w- their quarterback is uh, Mike Michael DeGear, right? I've seen him throw. He is uh, an interesting uh, character. For the WWE fans, he's like Sheamus, which is hilarious. And uh, okay. he, you, know, you should see Sheamus. He's like a very you, you should. You can put Sheamus on the screen. Sheamus, <laughs> Sheamus. I don't know who that is. That's None okay. of us know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> the first Sheamus Just you find. Sheamus. <laughs> Sheamus. WWE. There you go. Wasn't complicated. There, see, there he is. Okay. Looks like him. Anyways. But uh, as for his style of play, uh, he he is not fast. I'm not fast. Pease is not fast. Simon is slower than us. No, I'm slower. Wow! I'm slower. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Oh, it's okay. I'm uh, making up for the whole putting me on farmers, whatever, love.com, whatever. I didn't put you on farmers. Well, either. they did. The we near did. part of them. <laughs> there's <laughs> also. I made you put you on Farmsville. <laughs> Steph, there's also Farm Girl 57009454. She's 26 in Green Valley, Ontario. She's looking for a long term Christian, Caucasian, non smoker, drinking on special occasions with no children, college grad, agri business professional. Oh, that sounds wow. you're, you're a that lot sounds of those like things. Me. I'm a lot of those things. What is with the numbers at the end of every of these cow? Double girls? O, bro. Double O. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going back to nice. uh, Michael DeGear, he, ha- he doesn't have much of an arm, but he they adjust. Their playbook to their quarterback, obviously, because I mean, they, they have can't to, make, right? They have to, of course. That's like the main here's guy. the thing, is, and that leads into the next question: Is do you think Francois Martin is the right "quote unquote" QB coach for uh, Michel Michael Deguer? Because Francois Martin reads the field quickly and has an has a very strong arm. 
Yes, he does. And I feel like the plays that he's feeding his dude aren't entirely effective for someone with the, who doesn't have that skill set. Well, okay. if he wants to learn more than three plays, it's the wrong coach. Also true. Oh, wow. All right. Well, I mean... Where's the bus? Because, uh, you know... <laughs> no, but I... It's running over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's... No, I agree with you that I don't think François Martin is the right coach for that. Just I mean, I think it, like he's helped me personally. He's helped me a lot, like technically, like he's do this, look here, move your feet this way. But like uh, in terms of play calling, I don't, I don't know if he calls. Like I don't know if François Martin is comfortable with the concepts that can help M- Michael Deguer improve quickly. So well, look, like looking over what they've done over the first two weeks, they've had nine interceptions in two weeks. The f- week one and two, right? So if he's trying to make the same throws as François Martin, this is what's going to happen. He's going to throw five interceptions per game because he's going to underthrow every single receiver and his guys are not fast. So not only are they not going to win the, the patterns that they need to win. So the windows are small. <laughs> so on top of that, the, like the, the, the ball won't be placed properly. So considering they've only thrown one interception to get replacements who's always been known as a good defense in Division 6, it's, a, it's a good an, sign. It's an improvement of yeah. what they've been doing. Maybe they've changed the play calling saying, listen, this is obviously not working out. You need to try something different, and it does. It could be François Martin who's feeding him different plays, saying, "Listen, I these could work for you, or this these guys should be open, or maybe someone else stepped up in the team and said, listen, maybe use your snapper a little bit more, maybe use guys underneath it a little bit more.' It doesn't need to be complicated mm-hmm. to be successful in the FPF. You just need to find something that works for you and stick with it. Uh, Joe Marzuliano says, "Come on, man." Okay. okay. And is that, is that Zano dude? says past inmates, uh, and we have Nimrod who says, "What's up, Steph?" Oh, okay, cool. What's cool. up, Steph? So not not us. What's up, Nimrod? Nobody inmates. likes you guys. I told you, I'm a very likable person, and nobody Nimrod likes Janikovsky. Simo. And uh, what's his last name? Janikovsky. Janikovsky. I thought it was harder to pronounce. No, it's actually very easy. All names are difficult for you to pronounce. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> that might be my major problem. But you should call him Nimrod. Hard to pronounce. That would be great. <laughs> 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 so. But like, what's past inmates? Eagle. <laughs> what is past <laughs> inmates? I mean, it's Google people. past inmates. It's people who used to be in prison. Google. Okay, but what is he <laughs> referring to? Inmates. Uh, Google past inmates. And who said that again? It's Google bizarre. will say no, it who next. Who said past <laughs> inmates? Top stories: New York inmates with mental illness are held in prison past their release date. Now we know. Now we know, guys. But what is he Sorry, referring to? To you, Steph. So the the inmates were held there that's beyond. Not that's to not at the, all the what I'm asking about. I'm asking why was it mentioned? It doesn't matter. Well, I'm kind of curious. So let's rank the subdivisions. Yeah, go for <laughs> it. Looking at sort of like the, the, the teams that are most successful right now in the, in, in the uh, subdivisions. Right. So the top end of these subdivisions, let's rank them from hardest to weakest. So Conference A East, Unknown Talent, Scranton uh, Stragglers, Dog Pound, Pension Plan. Conference A West, Warriors, Hot Sauce, NWO, <laughs> Seventh Rounders. Conference B East, Dirty Laundry, Vultures, The Pack, um, Channel 4 News team. I always have difficulty reading the... Uh, Kent. It looks like yep. you put Kent. looks like something else, too. All right, cool. Uh, Channel 4... Uh, sorry, uh, Conference B West has Average Joe's VIB, Vic in a Box, Fat Diablos, and D2, the Mighty Ducks. So rank them and give me like a quick rationale as to why. We have a clarification on the numbers. Uh, when Steph asked uh, why do the girls have numbers, it's because that's their past inmate number. Oh, okay. See, that makes sense now. See, before I had no idea what he was talking about, but it makes sense. Now it makes sense. It does. Why? She's looking for 18 to 99. Yes. <laughs> she she, she, just needs she wants to. <laughs> she just doesn't <laughs> want to live alone. Anything. Go back to her wrong ways. <laughs> listen, listen, man. A life sentence is long. <laughs> um, but are we ranking them from uh, skill level to... So, like, uh, the, which, uh, which of these subdivisions have the hardest, let's say, top half? Oh, okay. So, like, um, against each other, I would say. The strongest division. Strongest division. Competitive, like, the competitiveness yeah. of these four teams. Do you want to start, Steph, or... Uh, no, give me a you quick question as to why. So, the number one to me is Conference 8 East. Uh, unknown talent. Dog Pound is... a decent team. Pension Plan should be playing better than they are. Unknown talent is probably the best team in the division altogether. Agreed. And the rest, like, even Scran- Scranton Scramblers... Stranglers? Stranglers off his right. I know. Uh, Pension Plan, it's good teams that are sort of... Lost in a mix because of who they're playing. So that would be my number one conference. It's probably the hardest one to play in. Conference B West with Average Joe's, Vic in the Box, Fat Diablos, and D2. The Ducks are good. Vic in the Box is good. Average Joe's is playing above average. Like They're they're playing well enough to make it into the playoffs, and then we'll see what happens. It, I guess Fat Diablos and TBA are interchangeable here because TBA technically won that game. Yes. 
I, I believe TBA is the stronger team of the two, but either way, like it's a it's a good conference as it is. And then there's Conference B East and Conference A West. Conference B East, Dirty Laundry, Vultures, the Pack, Channel Four News team should be good. Vultures is a strong team. Channel Four News team has been successful in the past. The Pack is a weird team that I always have a hard time putting my finger on. Are they good? Are they just getting by? I never know. It depends on the seasons, I guess. And Conference A West, there's just nobody in that division, so it's the worst. Fair. Makes sense. Uh, Conference A East, uh, unknown talent, in my opinion, should be a uh, Division 5 team. Mm-hmm. They are strong. And the fact that they uh, they they started, most of them started uh, in the Fall Cup, and they won with five players, might I add. So uh, that's a that's they they are they are talented. They're a bunch of uh, tackle football players that adjusted well to flag games. That's usually a, a huge adjustment for most tackle football teams to flag. Uh, so in my in that conference, I feel is uh, unknown talent, and then everybody else. So in uh, conference A West, that's uh, interesting. Might I say uh, <laughs> conference? I mean, uh, they're all equally unpredictable. So there could that's be times. Nice, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Rob always tells me be nice to people, and Ellen says be kind to one another. Ellen. So you're two. Be your own man. You're two. Well, Ellen Rob is the man Ellen? of that relationship, as you could tell. So, uh, conference A West, as I was saying, uh, the Warriors. They are. Uh, <laughs> they're they're they are a good team. Why is everybody laughing hysterically? <laughs> I don't get it. Ellen is the man of that Ellen is the man of that relationship. But you said that like you said that 20 times before. I've said it, it twice. Just, <laughs> it just okay? Came you off just weren't there the first time. So there you Apparently. go. Enlighten you. But uh, yeah, uh, there's uh, there's not much standout players in uh, Conference A West, and there's not many standout teams. So that's, in my opinion, the weaker challenge. Uh, Dirty Laundry, Vultures, The Pack, and Channel 4 News Team. Vultures are probably better than how they played this week usually uh dirty landry is a team that needs to uh discover well connect with each other better like there's a lot of miscommunication and stuff uh the pack like simon said is a team that uh they are either good bad or nothing and uh they're just uh they're they're always there they're just that that like you know mid table for soccer fan soccer fan mid-table team that just you don't know whether they are actually better than the top half or worse than the top or worse than the bottom half and uh conference b west uh vic in a box is a usually a good team uh five diablos and uh tba you said Mm -hmm. that's gonna be interchange uh they will probably uh wow that was bad they uh that's a d2 mighty ducks i haven't really seen them but they are uh, t- uh, they are a team that also needs to figure out their offensive schemes and stuff, but uh, in this subdivision, I would say the hard the weakest would be uh, Conference A West. The, str- the, sh- the hardest would be uh, Conference B East because they are more or less the same skill level. All right. Um, so you've heard Stefan already break down some of the teams in the division. I'm going to ask for a quick breakdown. Of some of the other teams, some of the lower tier teams. Uh, now I'm gonna give a disclaimer. This segment is meant in jest. It's we're gonna get 90 seconds of Stefano's thoughts <laughs> uh, as Eagles using my filibustering to cube the music. Um, I, if you have a problem with what he's saying, examine your priorities in life. Uh, it's really meant as a joke. Uh, <laughs> Stefano Berardi, when he sends me uh, updates as to what's happening at the field, what's going on. We're, we're a big league. We can't all be everywhere. So uh, I use our scorekeepers as a way to keep track on games and what's going on around the league in general. Um, and so Stefano is one of the guys I correspond with a lot specifically for Division Six. Uh, and his breakdowns are usually really funny. And this is a somewhat subdued version of that because he can't say a lot of those things on the air. Uh, and I bring you, gentlemen, 90 seconds of heat with Stefano Verardi. Wow, that is terrible entry music. So I'm going to give you a team. Yep, go for it. You give me a breakdown of what the team's uh, performance performances typically look like. Potatoes. Oh, they uh, live up to their name of being sacks of... A thing. A thing, pretty much, yeah. They're just there. They're pretty mm-hmm. much just there. Chocolate barracudas. Chocked up barracudas. Chocolate. Great. Chocolate barracudas. <laughs> uh, Chocolate barracudas would be a better name. <laughs> 
Well, Chocolate Barracudas, I hope you're sweeter than your actual play because that is uh, something that is very hard and sour to the eyes. Uh, replacements. Replacements, they are usually good. They've been bad. They have the same quarterback. They lose players. And uh, they need help. Zone 6 Ballers. Zone 6 Ballers, a bunch of athletes that are just there to waste an hour of fun with their friends. Uh, they are us- They were better last time. This time, not so much. But uh, you'll get there. Green Monster. Green Monster jerseys. Very nice. That's about it. <laughs> Seventh Rounders. Seventh Rounders. Know your rules. There was one of your guys asked me if a timeout stops the time. Not lying. <laughs> so, like, a timeout that didn't stop the time, would that just be, hey, ref, stop Hi. the time. How's it going? How's everything? How's the wife? Uh, TBA. <laughs> uh, to be... Announced um, as a team that is lacking in talent. All right, fourth and th- oh, oh, come on. Uh, should be 93 90 seconds. seconds. Just like that. Look at that. Flew before by. you even knew it, before you got there, Stefano got I there. I got there first <laughs> all the time. I have one last match for you, Steph. How many and numbers at the end of her one, prison? Code? Cowgirl 2823-2013. Wow. It just happens to work that's, out that way. That's a release date. So that's her release date. Was she released five years ago? No. Oh, I, right I really then. do think she's the one for you. She's Is she? 21, lives 78 miles away in Newport Center, Vermont. Mm, she's Newport looking Center. for a man. 21 oh, man. to 31. I'm 23. Six ah. feet to 6'6". Six, six. I'm 6'3". Six, Look at that. She's flying. And she doesn't have a preferred body type or smoke. That's good because I'm fat and very unattractive to women. But wait, it gets better. <laughs> oh. She has a description. Okay. A little about me. I have a Morgan horse, but I li- have a lot of admiration mm-hmm. and interest in gypsy v- uh, vanners or Ooh. vanners. I don't know. I've my seen weekends a seahorse. during the summer and fall usually consist of me helping my father run our hounds on bear. Am I the bear <laughs> I, that he runs the hounds on? I currently work at a small flooring mill. I know it's not an impressive job, but it pays the bills. That's good. I love most animals. Hopefully one day I can have a farm or homestead of my own. And she has multiple pictures other than just one. I really do think this is the one stuff. Well, I hate being on a farm. I was <laughs> That was already horrible. But uh, I. So why are you on FarmersOnly.com? <laughs> That's because desperation is a cruel mistress, I tell you. I, I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised she still has a, a Morgan. She hasn't gone to go find a way to Rivian. But I mean she has she has she still pays the bills. So I mean Vince that's says she's on parole on weekends. <laughs> <laughs> that, makes sense. that makes sense. Vince Pizzano seems to know a lot about he really does. this dating scene maybe and he the found justice that. system. Maybe he found that well, that that was the basis of the He's website. He's forwarding these to Eagle oh, by the way. Wow. Nice. Uh Eagle <laughs> what time is it? Games of the week because oh, I write God. the division six article and I make predictions in Mark Andre's article and don't want to take away from that. When Eagle gives us the game, I will break down, I'll give you a quick breakdown of the teams, and then you guys choose the games, and then we won't keep track of it, so it doesn't actually matter. All right. So we're going to start off with BDR versus Potatoes. BDR. So, yeah, let's go. All right. Potatoes Why are though? a sack of things that are. <laughs> because potatoes are a sack of a things. things yeah. exactly. BDR is a great name. That's All also, right. and it stands for some bar that is somewhere I've never been in my life. You know, that's not, doesn't stand for a bar. Right? No? What is it? Yeah, the hood, like a uh, roadie. Isn't it Brass Reed or something? All right. I'm pretty well, sure it's Brass Reed or something. Rosedale Renovations yeah, versus what? DGC. Rosedale Renovations, DGC. Rosedale Renovations with the newer teams in FPF. DGC being the stalwart that we've seen uh, under the tutelage of Fodi Vangelista. All right. Well, um, DGC. DGC faltered last week, not this week. All you right. just have to one-up me with a description, don't you? I'm asking both of you for a description. You're just not doing your job. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> right, my bad. My bad. Oh, Next I have one. to one-up. All right. We have the South Shore Seamen. Say that three times fast. South, South Shore, Shore Seamen are a team made entirely of semen. <laughs> Versus Los Siete Amigos. Los Siete Amigos, they're undefeated at the moment. And they will stay undefeated. Also made of semen, by the way, because everyone's made of semen. <laughs> Everybody is at made of semen. At least half. At least. At least. The others are uh, scientific. Somehow, but uh, Los Sietes. What's the What's the rest of that name? Amigos. 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 Six oh. friends. I, isn't that seven? Seven. seven Come friends. on now, guy. One because job. they are seven and they show up as seven people, they will remain undefeated. Because they're friends, they will win. They're yeah. seven friends. Seven. Friends. Not, not six. Not six. six. <laughs> seven friends. Yeah, because like six is unrealistic. Six seven. is just like tiresome. You're like, oh, I gotta play I, it. I really hope the roster minutes. is eight people. So one of them just like a random guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it? Was there a team oh. name like six fast guys minus Ryan at some point? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's the same thing. They probably stole that, their idea. No, but that's a joke. One and of them's not, she's not a friend. 
Oh, last baby. game of 6D, uh, last game of the week, actually. Brewers versus Bud Knights. Is this another shutout game? Easy. Is there beer? Brewers, uh, Brewers and Bud Knights. Brewers have been steadily improving. Bud Knights, some weeks, they have the best defense ever. Other weeks, they show up drunk as shit. All right, well, I feel wow. like with those names, they both show up drunk as shit. Well, Les possible. Brewers is something else that I am on. But uh, Bud Knight's defense is going to is gonna be able to uh, stop the Brewers' offense that needs help. Brewers still learning. Bud Knight's get another shout-out this week. Brewers, shout out. Uh, I'm saying six points. Brewers' name for Chris Murray, who uh, shares a love of brewing. Oh, nice. I do. So. Is he better than Bold Brews? No. Mm, I feel like that's a biased opinion. <laughs> yeah, and the right <laughs> one. Is he better than you, though? No. I feel like that's... Is he better than your ball. partner? My partner? The one in you crime? grew with? Uh, no, he's very attractive. Yeah, fair. I cool. said better. I didn't say more attractive. That's how I read people. <laughs> fair. Ah, I'm cool. very shallow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got some really good games this week in Div 6. We're going to start off with the Dog Pound versus Scranton Stranglers. Ooh. Dog Pound is uh, a team. They look really strong so far. I like them. Headed by uh, Shane Feinberg. Um, the, Shane Feinberg asked me why they weren't in my... my uh, Elite Eight last week, and I told him I legit forgot. Um, and that's not very they're playing against who eagle? They're Strand Stranglers, yeah. named after uh, the most uh, famous murderer in the office. Yes. Well, uh, Dog Kobe Pound Scratch. is a very good team. Uh, they are going to bounce back from their loss against Pension Plan. If uh, if they prevent mistakes, they're good to go as a win. I'm sorry, nobody likes Toby. Give me Dog Pound. <laughs> All right. Next game we're going to talk about is Scratch Fat Scratch. Diablos versus Vic in a Box. Fat Diablos uh, is a team that three of us can play on. Um, <laughs> I feel like I fit Vic those qualifications. Vic in the box has a snapper, and Daniel Pizzatore, who's less fat, lost about 20 pounds. Nice, I saw that. And Thought uh, it was something else. dude's leading team in receptions and yards. Yep, it's going to stay that way. He is going to be a guy that is going to get 10 catches and uh, three of those for touchdowns. Vic in the win. box is fast. Fat Diablos is not. That is a horrible Speed uh, wins in matchup. FBF. Ooh. Not okay. defense, piece. No, never. There you go. Dumb. That's what I was waiting for. Probably the best game of the week. Pension plan versus unknown talent. Ooh. Yeah. Bunch of old guys, bunch of young guys. Yes. Who wins? I feel like in uh, it will be a bunch of young guys because, as I said before, uh, the unknown talent, in my opinion, should be in the high Also, division. pension plan are all the coaches of, unknown of the talent. younger people. Yeah. yeah. Yep, so yeah, they might yeah. know their schemes, but I still think that uh, speed kills, like Simon said. and uh, don't find it, I think it's going to be beat down. Give me uh, unknown talent by 20. Ooh, 20. And then last game as well, last game of the week, Hot Sauce Sports versus NWO. I'll call it a mini rivalry for these guys. I guess. Well, you really played friends, so many though. times. so <laughs> We played a lot. I've never beaten Mike Sanchez when he's been quarterback. Mm, he's uh, how many losses? Sorry? How many losses? I think 0-2 or 0-3. Does that oh, include the eight. game with the butt fumble? Uh, butt fumble. Wait, does it work? Mike Sanchez. Can't every time. Um, That's cute. NWO, uh, very – one of the – Recurring teams, Division Six. Same with the cast of Hot Sauce Sports. Uh, one of the teams has a very attractive quarterback, and that team is Hot Sauce Sports. Oh, wow. Well, uh, I disagree with that last statement you made, Pete. It's okay. People are wrong. People 33% are wrong. of the people yep. voted for Hitler, no, so okay. you're just one of those people. Okay, also 50% of America. Actually, no, what is it? 53% of America voted for Trump? You're also one of those people. <laughs> yeah, I might be one of those people. Trump is uh, horrible. But That's actually not correct. Is it? What is it? Eagle fact checker. You lost uh, the popular vote. Fact checker. <laughs> you lost the popular vote. Eh? I know. Also, but I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure there are more than thirty-three percent. Yeah, I feel like he. There was no choice but to vote Sorry? for Hitler. No, Hitler vote was thirty-three percent. Was actually Hitler. a vote for Hitler. He, they formed a coalition government and named him as leader. Don't you know your history? Yeah, but then get the fuck. Yes, <laughs> but the then fuck? there was another vote which he won like. Can six I get your pick yeah. for the week, please? Oh uh, yeah, what was it? Again? All right, give me NWO. You did bring up Hitler guy. Yeah, uh, NWO uh, Sanchez coming back after a two-year hiatus. The uh, butt fumble. And the win. Yeah. Mark Sanchez, you suck. Mark Sanchez does suck. I mean, Mark Sanchez and FPF would actually be good. So this is a good time for us to do our awkward instructions. Oh, okay, introductions after the segment's yeah. over. Cool. My, my name is uh, Pease, and I uh, have my fiance pluck my eyebrows. Mm. So I have to say something stupid about myself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my, name is, uh, yes. my name is Stefano, and I am overweight. <laughs> My name is Simon. I've been working on this podcast for uh, too long now. Nobody cares. And I like to take off. You know those little plaques for you to plug in your electricity? I like to take them off and put them back on. Oh, I, I have, like I have a hundred to do at my house if you want. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eagle. Thanks for watching this show. Talk to you next week. How was that an introduction? I feel like you're cheating. 
You have to do it again. Well, no do one was going to do the outro, so I did the you outro. You have to do yeah. it again. Outro. Hate that word.